The annual China EU Business Summit was held in tandem with the leaders' political meetings in Nanjing. The summit is the highest level of meeting for business people from the two sides. This year's theme was the Green Agenda: Sustaining Growth Beyond the Recovery. It focused on how to achieve a sustainable recovery from the global financial crisis and climate change, as well as the development of China EU trade relations. And for more analysis on the China EU summit, joining me in the studio is Professor Huo Deming from Peking University. Professor Huo, as always, thanks for coming. Sure.、Uh, the EU-China summit is the highest level dialogue between the two sides. What do you th- what do you see the importance of this dialogue, and have you seen any concrete results coming out of it? Okay, this is the twelfth meeting, so it's not the first time. As the Chinese always say, "Now keep on dialoguing" is always a good sign. And I want to say this is the second meeting of this year,、mm-hmm. so it's not just one meeting annually; it's twice, especially because of the financial crisis. In this co- in this meeting, I noticed that there are some the five agreements being signed.、Mm-hmm. Among them, there's a near zero. Zero carbon utilization project. Well, that sign, that agreement is in accordance with the green, the green and sustainable growth for the entire world. As we know,、uh, Europe is going to have a, a European Union president very soon.、Mm-hmm. It is going to become more integrated. So, do you see any policy shift、uh, in in the field of its relations with China? Okay, the Lisbon Treaty, which is only effective on December the first, which we're going to see a president of EU. That means there could be a more united EU vis-a-vis China. And China, in this aspect, we have been a, a, a unified country three thousand years ago. So, in this respect, China is much able to dis. Discuss or negotiate with the EU on a, well, a country-to-country basis. I, I understand that EU is not just one country, but since they have、mm. a president and they also have like foreign ministers, now in this aspect, I think China will be able to resolve in the future any tri- frictions or any、uh, dispute on the climate change or on the responsibility of carbon trading and so on and so forth. As you mentioned, and we also know that EU is China's biggest trading partner,、mm-hmm. while China is EU's second biggest、uh, trading partner. So, in facing such a financial crisis or、mm-hmm. post-crisis period, do you think there will be further cooperations? On what fields will the two sides achieve? Okay, trade frictions is always the word that comes into my mind whenever we have recessions. But it looks like we're going to see a quite strong recovery in China and maybe next year in Europe. So, in terms of negotiation, in terms of、um, uh, cooperations, I think in this agreement, I see also, for instance, technological cooperations and also sustain the development of China's trade and investment on the on EU, and also there's environmental. Management. I think these are all the post- potential aspects for China to、uh, cooperate with the EU, especially on the climate side. And and talking about the cooperation between the two sides, it seems that Europe has some concern that the cooperation with China is lagged behind those. Cooperation between China and the United States.、Yes. Do you have the same concern? Oh yes.、Um, well, by historical standard, European uh, 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 countries are always kind of a conservative. But once they decide on what focus on what things they should do, they will do it. They more emphasize on environmental control, and they have been. Uh, 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 Making themselves as a more greener economy,、uh, better than U.S. So I think cooperation, China's cooperation with the EU, is much more fruitful. It's going to be more constructive. Okay.